Hey there, listeners. Welcome back to Wicked Deeds. We're your hosts. I'm Brittany. I'm John. And today I have a very interesting story for everyone. And John, I think you're going to have some strong feelings on this one. Are these good feelings or bad feelings? I'd go with mixed feelings. Mm, like mixed nuts. <laughs> yes. going to be a lot of peanuts, I bet. <laughs> now let's get into the episode. Caitlin Akins wasn't your typical 19-year-old. She was one of a kind. You couldn't miss her with her fun, colorful hairstyles and her bright tattoos. She loved to experiment with her hair. She's had basically every hairstyle you could imagine and rocked them all. She was talented, had a passion for cosmetology, and she was a great friend. And like any other teenager, she had her phone attached to her hip and was in constant contact with friends and family. Just after Thanksgiving in 2015, Caitlin flew from Arizona, where she'd been living for the past year or so with her fiancé, Amber, to visit her family in Spotsylvania, Virginia. She had grown up there and was heading back to visit her family. Her sister Gabby had actually just given birth to a baby boy, and Caitlin was going to meet him for the first time. Spotsylvania. (laughs) Yes, very unique name. Mm, Interesting. Caitlin loved her family, and she was thrilled to have time with them, even if it was short-lived. Her trip was only scheduled from December 1st to the 5th. So December 5th was the last day of Caitlin's visit, and her flight back home to Arizona was scheduled for 5.40 that evening. Her mother, Lisa, wanted to drop her off at the airport, but unfortunately she had to work that day. So she asked her ex-husband, who is Caitlin's stepfather, his name's James Branton, if uh, he wouldn't mind dropping her off at the airport. He let Lisa know that wasn't a problem, but he also had to work that day. His shift didn't start until 3 o'clock in the afternoon, though, so he would just drop Caitlin off a few hours earlier than when her flight was set to depart. Uh, Lisa had recalled that both James and Caitlin seemed to be in a good mood. There was no indication there were any issues. Lisa said goodbye to them and then made her way to work. Mm -hmm. So at 1.52 p.m., Lisa received a string of text messages from James stating he had dropped Caitlin off, but not at the airport. I guess she had requested to be dropped at the Springfield Mall so she could do a little shopping to kill time since James had to drop her off early. What time was her flight? 5.40. Okay. I can understand that then. Yeah. The metro station was just a short walk away, and she would take the metro to Washington Reagan National Airport to catch her flight later on. So this was surprising to Lisa, as she knew Caitlin hadn't used the Metro for like a decade, and she probably wouldn't know what she was doing. What if something went wrong? What if she missed her stop, which led her to miss her flight? You know, Mm -hmm. I mean, there are a bunch of things that could go wrong in that instance. Yeah. Then eight minutes later, at two o'clock on the dot, Caitlin sent a text to her mom stating, quote, I'm at the airport, battery dying, so won't be able to text for a bit. Shit's fishy already. (laughs) <laughs> My thoughts exactly. Do we know how the relationship is between Caitlin and James? We'll get there. Okay. So my first thought here is how is it that James texted Lisa at one fifty two, and then at 2 o'clock, Caitlin texted Lisa, and they're both saying that Caitlin is in two different places. Mm-hmm. That does not add up. It doesn't add up on multiple avenues because if you're James trying to hide something, Like, why would you text on your phone saying one thing and then text on Caitlin's saying something totally different? That's exactly where my head went. Because you're not covering your tracks very well. No, not at all. So, to me, I mean, if Caitlin, I don't know Caitlin's background, but if she's up to something fishy, maybe she thought that James wouldn't go to her mom and say where he dropped her off at. Mm -hmm. And maybe she's just trying to, you know. Be like, ooh, I'm going to go somewhere and do something and not tell. Yeah, for whatever reason. Yeah. But... I would be more uh, inclined to think that, you know, James probably did drop her off where he said, Mm -hmm. and Caitlin is the one coming up with some type of lie. Okay. All right. That's where I'm at right now. Okay. So this, I mean, this seemed innocent enough 
when Lisa got the text. She wasn't really thinking anything of it until she found out from Caitlin's fiance, Amber, that Caitlin had actually texted her at 11.56 a.m., two hours before James would let Lisa know that he dropped Caitlin off. And that text said, something came up. I'm not coming back today. I'll let you know when I get a new flight. I won't be able to text for a bit. This is all over the place. It is all over the place. Hmm. It's not making sense. She's basically telling three different people three different things in three different places. So chronologically, Amber, Mm -hmm. Caitlin's fiance, got the first text message. Correct. At 11.56. Yes. Then James text messages Caitlin's mom. And then eight minutes later, Caitlin texts her mom. Correct. Okay. So at this point, I would assume alarm bells are going off. I'm not entirely sure based on the articles out in the world, but I would assume that family, friends, her fiance, they're all trying to get in touch with her between that text message that was sent at two o'clock and when her flight was supposed to take off at 540. Mm -hmm. Well, we find out later that Caitlin never boarded her flight. Okay. Almost two hours after her flight was set to take off, she sent a text to her mom. This was at 715 stating, quote, I'm staying with a friend. I need some time alone. Already, it's it's setting off alarm bells. There's concerns here. There are already concerns from earlier in the day. There's more concerns now. But the one thing that Caitlin's mom says about this that, I mean, I think I can completely understand is that these text messages were sent from Caitlin one after the other. So Caitlin's not what you would call a double texter. So she is one of those people that sends a really long paragraph Mm -hmm. in one message about everything that she has to say. She'll wait until whoever she's texting responds back, and Mm -hmm. then she'll give her next response. She is not the type of person that will say one thing in one message and then another thing in another message. But that's what she does here. I think I've evolved as a texter. I used to do it all in one paragraph, Mm -hmm. but now I feel like my thoughts come at a different pace. Sporadically, yes. And, I, a, and I'll I'll kind of shoot them out <laughs> in, in spurts sometimes. I do this. I'll, I'll quadruple text you. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> um, so her mom then responded to those texts from Caitlin and said to call her that she's worried. Mm-hmm. Caitlin would never respond again. So is there trouble in paradise? Does Caitlin not want to go back to Arizona because she's having second thoughts about her relationship? It's like you read the script before, but you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, you I are mean, very intuitive. That, that's that's my question because, mm-hmm. again, like if if I'm putting myself in James's shoes and I'm trying to do something shady, mm-hmm. you know, whether it be kill someone or abduct someone, so or you are you are reason. up front getting a bad vibe from James. Not really. To be honest. Okay. At this point right now, I think unless he is absolutely inept and he's so dumb to send contradicting text messages from two different phones at two different times saying two totally different things like minutes apart. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Maybe he is. And maybe I have, you know, too much faith in him. But to me, I'm more along the lines of like, okay, I think that James probably dropped her off somewhere. Other than the airport. Mm -hmm. If she requested to. I mean, three and a half hours early for a flight. I mean, I know I'd go shopping. I would take that all day rather than sitting in an uncomfortable chair in the airport. Well, not if my dad was dropping us off. (laughs) (laughs) We would be there two days before. Right. So, I mean, where I'm at right now, I think it's more along the lines of Caitlin is having trouble in paradise. Mm Mm-hmm. And there's something going on there. I don't think at this point James is super suspicious. Okay. So my I think I, I'm on a different wavelength than you. My first thought is, what did James know? Like, he was the last person to see Caitlin before she disappeared. Mm-hmm. Did Caitlin divulge some information to him that maybe he didn't want to tell her fiance or her mom? You know, maybe he was keeping a secret, right? I'm not saying that James doesn't know something. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying as of right now, I I sense... You don't think he's a murderer. Right. I sense no maliciousness in this outside of possible ineptitude if he did do something bad. Okay. As of right now, I think it's Caitlin 
trying to avoid going back home for whatever reason. Okay, so the interesting thing here is, from the get-go, James was uncooperative with police. Once police started investigating this as a missing persons case, one of the first things that came up was the fact that there was no record of James or Caitlin seen on surveillance video at the mall he said he dropped her off at, the metro station, which was like the in-between from the mall and the airport, or the airport. So he is not seen, and neither is Caitlin, on any surveillance. What year is this? 2015. Okay, I mean, is there a chance that he could have dropped her off at the mall and there's not a surveillance camera right outside where the exit was or whatever? Well, what I'm thinking based on at least what I've read is that I think like the route of the way the car would, Mm -hmm. like whichever way you have to drive through the mall parking lot, you should have been caught on camera at some point. So not even just him, but not his car. Okay, I I definitely could have not put this together, but there's no record, not of James and Caitlin together. There's no record of of James or Caitlin at any of these places, period. Correct. All right, that's a problem. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) So, and that was my thing. It's like, it's not like it's 1970. And, you know, you're trying to, to solve a case of a missing person and all you have to rely on are eyewitnesses. Right, right. So. Yeah, that's uh, that's strange. I mean, to not have them on surveillance anywhere. And, you know, the metro station in the airport, there's cameras everywhere. Exactly. I mean, what is it, six years ago? It's not. Maybe, maybe not at the mall, but mm-hmm. to not see either of them yep. at any of the three locations, that should uh, send up some red flags right off the bat. Agreed. So there was also suspicion around if Caitlin was even the one to send the text messages that came up from her phone. I mean, mm-hmm. I feel like you already are under right. that impression to yeah. say, you know, maybe James was doing something. Who knows? Haven't ruled um, it out, but yep. we're, we're not there yet. Yep, exactly. So I'm wondering, did something happen and James texted from Caitlin's phone to cover his tracks? Um, did Caitlin send some of these messages, but not all of them? There's a lot of questions that go into the text messages. And I think that's like one of the biggest pieces of this case Mm -hmm. is who sent the texts? Why were the texts sent the way they were? What do they mean? There's just so much surrounding that. Yeah. What's the timeline of, you know, if the text messages were falsified by somebody, were they all or Mm -hmm. was the first set of text messages to her fiance legitimate? Mm hmm. And, they, and maybe she they, told James that James tried to help her out with and something. And tried to bring her somewhere or whatever. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So two days later, Caitlin's luggage is found and it's in a drainage ditch 50 miles away from the airport. Wow. Like what? That doesn't make sense to me. It's not computing. Why is it so far away? And so. I, one thing is. Mm-hmm. And this is just trying to piece things together. Mm -hmm. Okay, the luggage is 50 miles away. If Caitlin requested to be dropped off at the mall and she was going to take the metro to the airport, is the mall 50 miles away from the airport? And was she going to take the metro all the way there? She would have had to take her luggage with her because James was dropping her off somewhere. So the luggage would have been in her possession regardless of how far... She may have been. So the luggage is far away from all locations. The okay. luggage is not like one mile from the metro or one mile from mm-hmm. the mall. Like it's it's all a, a a suspicious distance. Okay. So the luggage is and becomes a crucial clue. When police searched the contents, they noticed that um, what was in the suitcase was just a small amount of clothing, her glasses, which you might think uh, she needs those to see. <laughs> <laughs> Her wallet and even the plane ticket that she was supposed to use to fly back home to Arizona. Now, what was missing? One change of clothes, her cell phone, and her high school diploma. Who travels with their high school diploma? I'm glad you asked. (laughs) (laughs) So she originally made this trip to Virginia to see her nephew, but another reason that she was heading there was to pick up her high school diploma from her mom because she needed a copy to get into cosmetology school. Like I mentioned before, she really she's mm-hmm. really into hair, all of that, so she was going to be starting. And you. she was actually supposed to be starting cosmetology school on the 7th. Okay. So she came home, 
saw family, grabbed her high school diploma, and then, you know, was heading right back to go to school. Mm -hmm. So I would think that's an odd choice of items to bring with you if you're going to try and run away from the world. Yeah. She can't see, but she's got her high school diploma. I mean, let's give her the benefit of the doubt. Does she have two pairs of glasses? Does she have a pair of contacts? Okay, all right, okay, I'll give you that one. (laughs) (laughs) So now they know Caitlin is definitely a missing person. She didn't make her flight. She wasn't acting like herself in the text messages she was sending to family and friends. And she hadn't contacted anyone in over 48 hours. So as I mentioned before, James was uncooperative from the beginning, even though he was the last person to see Caitlin alive and could hopefully piece some things together. Why are people always uncooperative off the bat? That's a really great question. It I seems mean, like a lot of these cases are similar. Yeah. And just for recent events, yep. I mean, I understand that parents and children are a little different, but can we talk about the laundry family? We absolutely Uncooperative can. from the beginning. Yep. Talk about adding suspicion to that. But you see, the thing about that is like, it was like premeditated uncooperation. Right. It's like, hey, let's go on a trip and we're going to bring our 23-year-old son with us after he just showed up without his fiance. He just went on a, a, a country trip. A four-month trip, trip with. with. Exactly. Right. It, it just makes no sense to me. And, you know, I think the uncooperativeness just bring so much more suspicion onto people. Like if you were cooperative from the very beginning, gave all the information that you could, I mean, there's a potential that people are going to leave you be. There is. And there's also the potential that the the fucked up thing you did comes out. So, (laughs) you know, either that or some gung ho detective that wants to, you know, nail somebody for the crime takes whatever little bit of information that you give them and warps it into whatever messed up sense of reality he has and then pins it on you and you end up screwed in the end. So I understand like people have you know, their constitutional like, rights. Like Adnan Syed? Like Adnan Syed. Oh, I mean. Fires it, me up. <laughs> you have the right to not say anything. I don't know if that necessarily, you know, makes you uncooperative mm-hmm. because it's your right to not say anything. Like. Well, I think so. This is we'll get a little bit more into how uncooperative James is. Mm-hmm. I think that will, you know, lay the groundwork a little bit better. OK. So as police start to dig deeper into things, they discover something very interesting. James had mentioned to Lisa that the day he was going to be dropping Caitlin off at the airport that he had to work. And that's why he was dropping her off a little bit earlier so that he could make it on time to his shift. Well, he didn't go to work that day. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I could have guessed that. Yep. How sketchy, though. Yeah, that's weird. At the end of the day, they need to get more information from James at this point. They asked him if he'd be willing to take a polygraph test. At first, he agreed. But then when the day came to actually take the test, he backed out and refused. So we're going to label that as red flag number one. So police end up getting a warrant to search his home. They seized guns, electronics, and his cell phone. Which, mind you, he had, like, super professionally encrypted, and he refused to provide detectives with the passcode to unlock it. Did he do something like that for work? Do we know? Uh, I believe he worked on some sort of, like, military-type base, so Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if, like, he's got these professional skills, or if he... He works with somebody that does? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, but the thing that I don't understand is, like, you don't have enough to get some sort of warrant or get some fancy FBI guy to get in there and crack the code to get into the phone? I mean, there's no body right now. She's an adult. Mm. She could just be like, fuck everybody, I want to go off the grid. Those are just the frustrating things about situations like this, though. It's like, you just want to see, like, what does he have? What could he possibly have in there that he wants to hide so desperately? But that boils down to rights. And exactly. at the end of the day, it's like those protect you, too. Whereas mm-hmm. he may be a real piece of shit. Yep. You know, one day those rights may be in place to protect you or somebody that you know in in a similar fashion that, yeah. you know, they might not have anything to hide, but they don't want people to get into their stuff because they have the right not to. Exactly. So that kind of brings us to our first theory, which is, like you mentioned before, Caitlin just up and left her life behind. Mm-hmm. Um, so a few articles that I read, and this is where things start to get a little a little more fishy. Um, Caitlin had sent a Facebook message to a friend 
saying she didn't want to be in Virginia anymore and she didn't want to be in Arizona either. So maybe she, I mean, maybe she was just an angsty teen and she really wanted to run away. And, you know, she was unhappy with her fiance. She didn't want to be around her family for whatever reason. Maybe it's because James was around living in that area. Who knows? But the most compelling evidence for this theory is the fact that Caitlin cheated on her fiance. So Caitlin had confided in a friend and told them what happened. On December 4th, the night before she was supposed to fly home, uh, Caitlin had gotten together with some old friends. I guess it was an alcohol-fueled situation and a threesome took place. Giggity. (laughs) Caitlin felt absolutely horrible about her actions and professed how upset she was to her friend. Caitlin had actually confessed her infidelity in a message to Amber and told her that she couldn't come home because she'd cheated on her. So, I mean, I'll commend her for being honest about it, but if you agree with the theory that she ran away and wants to stay hidden, why would she even bother telling her fiancé that? So does she text her that night about it? I can't quite tell in the timeline when Amber is told. I think it's along the lines of when those Facebook messages were sent. Mm -hmm. Um you know, and then maybe the next day is when she sends that message to her where she's like, you know, something came up. I can't come home. Like, is she trying to run away now from the fact that, you know, she told Amber about this and now she's feeling even more ashamed of herself and she just feels like she can't it. come home and face her. Yeah. yeah. So me personally, I don't really think the evidence completely points to her vanishing and leaving her entire life behind because of one mistake. Um, I mean, maybe I'm just biased, but like I just see all clues pointing to James and I feel like James is just hiding something. Yeah. I think we need to know more background about James and Caitlin's relationship because as of right now, there's nothing that I've heard that, I mean, outside of being uncooperative with police and having a super encrypted phone and, you know, conflicting and lying about work. Yeah. And lying about work. Okay. I mean, they're starting to pile up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, I mean, still, it could all be circumstantial. Mm-hmm. It, it, which is true. Yes. So we'll get more into James in a little bit. But our second theory that it doesn't seem like too many people believe or really are, are on board with, but it's important to put it out there. Um, some people believe she might have committed suicide. Her family didn't think that she was suicidal. There's not really any evidence that this would have happened. None of her messages seemed like she wanted to end her life. She was just going through a rough patch. Um, And my other question on that is, if she had committed suicide, how did her luggage get where it was? And why hasn't anyone found a body? Mm -hmm. But as of right now. And another thing to think about with that too is, so she, she took her phone with her, but her phone has never pinged anywhere else. She's never sent any other messages or phone. Exactly. So maybe not her. Someone has possession of the phone. For sure. Right. So now we'll move on to James. James is involved in some way, shape, or form, and he's just not saying anything. Uh, This does seem to be like the most widely accepted theory in her disappearance. Most people believe that James is responsible in some way. So I thought we could do a tally of red flags. Red flag one, James wouldn't cooperate from the get-go. Second one, he lied about where he dropped her off. Third red flag, he called out of work the same day she went missing. Fourth red flag, he had originally said he'd take a polygraph and then backed out. And finally, our fifth red flag, he has an encrypted cell phone and refuses to give the password to police. So another piece of information, which I think you will find very interesting, is one of Caitlin's friends had actually given an interview online um, and he was a little bit vague about the information and I don't know if he just didn't want to, you know, express too much of information that Caitlin had confided in him, but it seems like James may have been abusive towards Caitlin when she was growing up. So he's been like a long-term stepfather? Yeah. I guess, according to this friend, Caitlin was afraid of James. So there's, there's something going on there. There's something weird. He's potentially abused her. Then why would Lisa agree to allow James to bring Caitlin? And why would Caitlin also agree to say, yeah, that's okay? So she's a 19-year-old woman at this point in life. She probably feels as though she can take care of herself. And 
I mean, what is she doing? She she's getting dropped off at an airport. I mean, it's not like she's sleeping over that she's spending a ton of time with him. She's just pretty much accepting a ride. I think looking at it from like a me as a teenager, I mm-hmm. don't know about you as a teenager, but like if somebody has severely wronged me and they're offering to do the smallest thing for me, I'd be like, no, fuck you. I'll take a taxi. I'm all set. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. I don't like you. I'm not going to hide it. So. I think your personality is more so, like you, you're good with confrontation. I am not. Sometimes I will just be stuck in an uncomfortable situation and I'll just, I'll just deal with it. And well, an easy way to get out of an uncomfortable confrontation would be to like, oh no, it's okay. I'll, I'll just take a taxi. There are other ways out of it without having to accept it. Yes, I agree with that. But you just don't know where they stood in that moment. There's not enough information out there in the world. And I mean, this is a a more recent case. There's not like a ton of information. So for all we know, maybe they had just mended things. And she's like, you know what? Fine. Yeah, I'll just let them take me. Big deal. So something that I was thinking of is like, between the time that Lisa dropped Caitlin off in the morning, I would assume, you know, if she had to be at work at nine, it was probably sometime between like eight and nine a.m. James said he dropped Caitlin off at just about two o'clock. So, you know, that leaves a, a good chunk of time. Yeah. Did he try and, and, you know, assault her? Yeah, push himself on her. Did they get into some sort of verbal altercation? Did James snap and, you know, did he hurt her? Or just kick her out of the car? Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, there there could have been multiple things that happened. And for all we know, like, he's like, oh, my God, what did I do? I have to clean this up mm-hmm. and I have to, you know, figure this out right now. So then he, maybe he's not thinking clearly and he goes and he sends that text to Lisa and then he sends that text pretending to be Caitlin. And then that would say, OK, maybe this guy's not inept. He's just freaking out because he just did something messed up. So, you know, that that's obviously something that could have happened so something else to note about the text messages that quote caitlin sent to her mom at two o'clock we're saying quote because we're not entirely sure if it was her her cell phone like for that text message pinged 30 miles away from the airport so that's not right yeah i mean generally even with a ping it's usually like within one square mile exactly it's really hard to locate somebody you know dead to a location Mm -hmm. but for a general ballpark that that should be fairly accurate and then the two text messages that she sent back to back at 7 15 the ones that her mom had thought were suspicious because she's not a double texter Mm -hmm. those also did not ping anywhere near the airport those pinged um it's called it's i-95 in stafford county which is less than 15 miles away from where they found caitlin's luggage so none of the cell phone pings actually match up to where Caitlin supposedly was or what she was doing at the time that these messages were sent. Yeah. So because James called out of work, it's not like he's got an alibi. Right. We don't know where he was the entire afternoon. And something to note about that, too, is he didn't, like, call in sick or give a reason. It was just, I'm not going to be here. That's it. So it's not like they can even ask his boss, like, oh, what was his reasoning for being out that day? Did he get sick? Did he do this? Did he get in a car accident? Like, who knows? But he didn't give any reason as to why he wasn't there. So I feel like there's a lot of evidence and a lot of information that police are not releasing in this case. There's probably a lot that they know that they're just not releasing to the public. Even still today? Even still today, yeah. I feel like the majority of things that I've seen online are are from her family. Her family's doing interviews. They're bringing awareness. They're, you know, getting the word out there that their daughter's missing and they want her to come home. And police just, I I have not seen like a ton of articles of police saying what they have to anyone. They're just pretty much saying, you know, James was uncooperative. We're doing what we can. And it's an open, active investigation. And that's like the majority of what I've, what I've seen online. So this December marks six years since Caitlin's disappearance, and her family is obviously desperate for answers. They're pleading with James to come forward with information on her whereabouts or any information that he might know about what happened to her that day. So is James and Lisa still together? No. They separated shortly after the disappearance, I assume? No, they were divorced well before the disappearance. They were not together when this all happened. So why was there even a connection with Lisa 
to ask James to bring her. I don't think there was anybody else around. Well, that's shit luck. Sure is. It, do- it doesn't seem like James is going to budge. Like, there were some articles and, and even videos online that I saw where reporters were, like, trying to talk to him, and he just, like, speeds off in his car and, you know, will roll his window up really fast. Like, he wants nothing to do with anyone that wants to talk to him about this. So now the family's pulling out the big guns, and they're going to really try and mess with James. They're actually putting up a billboard for Caitlin. So this billboard's going up on Route 301. You know where Route 301 is? Smack dab in the middle of where James lives and where James works. Oh, jeez. He's going to have to see that shit He has to see it every single day. I mean, if he's a sociopath and he did something, it probably won't affect him, but... Right. That is true. So that's a bold move. But it is a bold move, and they're like, you know what? We want answers. We want you to come forward, and we're going to do whatever we can to pretty much make your life a living hell until you do. So final thoughts, John, on where you stand, because I feel like you started this this conversation, um, you know, not really thinking too, too poorly of James. You were maybe giving him a little bit of a benefit of the doubt in the beginning. What are you feeling about him now? I mean, it's always easier to look at all of the information and mm-hmm. it seems and come to some type of conclusion and unfortunately we don't have all of the information mm-hmm. so there probably is a lot of stuff that police you know are holding you know close to the chest or don't want to let out to the public because if something were to leak as far as you know a potential suspect finding out that the police know this they may run they may who knows mm-hmm. but I think based on the information provided um James seems to be the only person of interest outside of the possibility that Caitlin has ran away and tried to start a new life somewhere, which I don't know. It doesn't seem like what information actually genuinely leads you to believe that other than speculation. Right. I think that there's, there's a lot more in favor of saying that James is potentially, you know, maliciously involved in the situation. And, uh, the fact that he doesn't want to help out at all and say, you know, this is where I dropped her off. This is that. This is that. Um, yeah, I mean, he's he's definitely a person of interest. I think that he, he may not be a killer mm-hmm. for all we know, but, you know, something's up. Mm-hmm. So I'm interested to see if uh, police ever find a way to get into that phone. Yeah, I'm really curious about that too and I'm I'm wondering like are they are they keeping information close because they're getting close? Mm-hmm. Like is there something that they just don't want leaked out to the public that is huge and is this big thing that could totally close this case? Yeah, cuz this is still a, a recent case. I mean, 6 years old is not that bad. Mhm. As far as like a cold case goes, yep. if you would consider it that. Yeah, I don't I mean, I don't think they would. It seems like they're very very actively working on it. Um, but they're just not, they're not giving out information to the public. And in one respect, I'm like, oh, that's so frustrating. Like we want to know more, but at the same time, it's like, okay, maybe they're doing this for good reason and something is going to come out. I'd be interested to know more about like the location, Mm -hmm. uh, of where she was last seen or where she was last, um, I guess thought to be based on the ping of the cell phone. If she was still in possession of it at that time. Because I find it odd that, you know, the I, the family was not, you know, slow to react to this. Within two days, I mean, it was like, hey, she's mm-hmm. missing. We got to look for her. We got to find Oh, they were of- looking for her that night. Seven o'clock that night after she sent those messages. They were like instantaneously like, uh-uh. So, I mean, with all the technology that's out there today, um, I know that things still happen. But I find it odd that, you know, if she had been killed, there's no body that's been found. Mm -hmm. So who knows? I mean, I'm still up in the air on it. I think James definitely seems to be a shady guy, a character that's up to no good. Mm -hmm. Um, But I can't definitively say whether or not, you know, he killed her or she's dead. Yeah, something else that I was thinking, like for, for people coming forward and like the fact that they're looking at surveillance videos, you know, to see if he or she were on any videos in either of those three places... I mean, it's 
it was 2015, like we were saying about Caitlyn, she's got her phone attached to her at every waking moment. Are there people who are taking photos, taking videos in any of those areas? Does anybody have something on their phone from six years ago when they were like, how many people take, you know, cutesy airport pics in, right, right. you know, in the front of the airport when they're going to travel? Yeah. Does anybody have a photo of her that maybe they didn't realize? Mm-hmm. And, you know, that could lead down a different route of what could have happened. Yeah, I um, I don't know. This one's definitely left me at a loss. That's unlike you. <clears throat> I mean, I always have my opinion on things. And <laughs> I think that. Um, it, it's, it's not out of the realm of possibility that a potentially troubled adolescent or teenager that knew that she was going to be going back to a bad relationship because she had just cheated on her significant other Mm -hmm. would try to go somewhere else and just leave everything behind. Yep. And maybe she brought her high school diploma with her because she's like, I'm going to need this for cosmetology school. You can be a maybe. hairstylist anywhere. Yep. Maybe yeah. that's why she took that. And I mean, so there could be really sinister reasons for all of this happening, or it could be something as simple as she just didn't want to be in her life anymore. She just wanted to start new. Let me try and spin something to you. Okay. And this is just... Uh, A third theory, because we have that other theory that people don't... Well, no, this is a fourth theory then. Okay, so let's label this as theory number four. Okay. Which this, I'm not saying that this is, you know, what happened, but we don't know what happened, so let's put all our cards on the table. Mm Mm-hmm. Let's say that James felt bad for whatever wicked deed Mm. he had carried out towards Caitlin back in the day, if it had happened. So to repent for whatever he had done, he wanted to help her escape whatever she was trying to get away from. Mm -hmm. That's why he doesn't want to provide any information. He said, hey, take the the least amount of stuff that you need. Take your change of clothes. Take your diploma because you need it to get into cosmetology school or whatever. And here's some money and go, go start a life somewhere else. Hey, I mean, it's a theory. I've heard far more far-fetched <laughs> theories than that. Um, playing devil's advocate, the only thing that really throws me on the diploma is, wouldn't you think if she's going to leave, she's going to use a different name? Yeah, that's true. But either way, the forget the diploma. Maybe it's just a, a piece of her old life that she wants, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's all she had of her old life, so she wanted to take that with her. Yeah, I don't know. I think, uh, I think, I, I, you can't really sway me one way or the other. She could have just wanted to leave and she's gone, but James is not helping his case by not cooperating. And I think that's just, there's just not enough information. Until more information comes out to sway me one way or the other, mm-hmm. I'm like right down the middle. If you told me one thing happened versus the other thing happened, I would be equally as surprised regardless of the outcome. Yep, I think uh, we'll obviously keep a close eye on the case and anything new that comes out. I mean, I've got Google Alerts for literally everything it feels like these days. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, if anything new comes out, we'll definitely update. We'll post on Instagram and all the socials about our feelings on things. So we've posted a photo on our Instagram and our website of what Caitlin looks like and some photos of her tattoos as well. She has a tattoo on her forearm of some butterflies with like some blue hazy swirlies around it. And then she has some like really bright stars on one of her feet. They're definitely very distinctive. I'm sure if you saw her, especially if you saw her in the summer or something, you know, in a tank top, you're going to see the one on her arm. So, you know, hopefully those would be able to help identify her. She was last seen wearing a dark gray pullover sweatshirt with a Bass Pro Shop logo on it, uh, black pants, and pink and black van shoes. At the time of her disappearance, she was five foot four and 122 pounds. If you know anything at all about Caitlin's whereabouts, please contact the Spotsylvania Sheriff's Office at 540-507-7200 or Spotsylvania Crime Stoppers at 540-582-5822. Hopefully, we can bring Caitlin home soon.
Thank you so much for listening in. We're super excited to cover additional cases, and we really want to hear from you. If you liked this episode, please leave us a five-star review on whatever platform you're listening on, and join our Facebook page, Wicked Deeds. Leave us some suggestions for cases or topics you'd like us to cover. But most importantly, tune in next week for an all-new episode.